So, we start with the other kind of evaporation which is essentially related to still evaporation but not using heating, resistive heating. Here is the second possibility of evaporating a material and the process is called electron beam evaporation. The basic idea of electron beam evaporation is the following. I have a some kind of a source of electrons which can be from filament. Then you have an extractor voltage, similar like implanter you have seen the start source as well as the extractor. Then uh, there is some kind of a beam forming aperture uh, which also is, has some voltages uh, applied on that and bendings are possible. Then uh, this electron beam passes through a magnetic system, sometimes directly through electric system it is possible if it is only 90 degree shifts, but since I want 270, I need both electromagnets as well as electric fields to be bend the beam. The beam bending is essentially because of the Lorentz force V cross B. So, accelerated beam not really very large energy, 10 keV energy is all that is needed. Typically energy used in electron beam is 5 keV, okay. but source normally can go up to 10 keV. So, this beam, electron beam, some people have electron beam coming from the vertical region itself. The kind of system given in plumber has right side, so I also copied it, that is it. No more. The way I have done it myself was a slightly different version of this. So, this electron beam which is accelerated by potential of 10 k and therefore it has a 10 kV energy is so focused at 270 degree beam angle that in a crucible which is which has internally which has a graphite hearth as it is called you have the material which is you want to evaporate. It can be pieces, it can be powder, it can be wires, anything can be put there, it is a crucible there. And of course, there is a possibility of this beam forming aperture, some voltages are given so the beam can be scanned as well, okay, x, y, some raster can be given on that. But normally not needed because this aperture is very small. Once it starts heating this, the energy from the electrons is delivered to the metal or whatever material and if the temperature rise because of that is sufficient enough, it melts and if it is still higher, it evaporates. Normally you need some cooling system in this because it is a very large temperature 1800 degree centigrade or above. Therefore, you need a huge cooling system and say the outer vessel is of copper, many things. Now, so this can be replacing the source of either the coil or the basket which I did in resistive heater. Same this only thing now it is a crucible through which material can evaporate. Is that clear? Material can evaporate. The target is again above. The vacuum is as much as possible because so that the mean free path is larger than the distance and at an angle it will also have the lesser thickness compared to this. To avoid this as I said you have a planetary system, the big dome which has number of wafers attached there which themselves can rotate and whole dome rotates. So that uniformity of film thickness is roughly possible. Perpendicular bhi karte hain, 90 degree may bhi shift dete hain. But there is an advantage of 270 beam degree, read Plummer's book. Okay, you know the normally this system, this may be out, just, just corner of the system. So I do not want to bring anything which may degas and actually impinge on this. So I want to keep my beam as pure as possible. So if I am pushing from outside, the rest of the system does not affect the hearth system, okay. So that is the idea there. This e-beam is of course is a little costlier system, but one biggest advantage of e-beam is uh, since it is 10 kV energy can be provided, it can evaporate many things, not necessarily metals. Of course metals it can, not metals of which are 3000, uh, typically molybdenum, platinum, rhodium, gallodium, Tungsten, they are not the material which even electron beam can probably melt. You can by increasing the energy, but then the system will become bigger and whole effort will be waste of money.
So here is something you want, there is nothing in that figure, okay, great. So what is the advantage disadvantage of this system? E beam is a complex and costlier than simple elaboration system. Simple elaboration system is very cheap comparatively, okay. A Indian company can give you as low as 3.5 lakhs or so whereas if you buy from abroad any Edward or Varian or anyone it may cost you 12 to 15 lakhs even otherwise and E beam may be even costlier. Typical as I say extractor voltage is 5 to 10 kV. The temperatures if you increase 10 kV some of the temperatures people have reached up to 3000 but typically it should be around 2200 to 2400 is all that temperature normal otherwise the cooling system requires huge amount there because if you have a 3000 degree hearth you need huge cooling actually and that may cost you so people do not make it is possible but normally it is not used for 3000 degree centigrade heating. Now the advantage being this since it can go at higher temperatures, it can operate all resistive heated system materials and that apart it can also evaporate nickel, platinum, titanium, vanadium, zirconium, tungsten if it goes to 3000, tungsten, tantalum, rhodium, gallodium, icinium, everything. It can also evaporate, of course it depends on the, if you are 10 keV, normally most beams are 5 keV. Then this of course higher materials will not be able to evaporate. You can also evaporate alumina, SiO, SiO2, tin oxide, titanium oxide and many of such oxides. The major problem with uh, uh, electron beam is since it is 5 keV, even if you are now saying that electrons are only hitting the crucible, so one believes that electrons do not disperse. But in real life they may scatter from variety of parts of the system itself from the crucible age, from the age of the where the magnet hits out. So all beams are not fully focused though we try, some is scattering, some is secondary electrons creation. Now these, some of these electrons can go and hit target. Okay. Now any high energy beam or high energy electrons if they hit uh, at least an MOS device in particular, it may actually charge the MOS that means the oxide charge will increase or minus charge will increase which essentially means threshold will shift. So it is called radiation damage, okay. it is called radiation damage. So 5 kV is a small energy, the radiation damage in space is much more higher, there is a one MeV energy uh, charge particles are there in space in Van Allen's belt but even 5 kV but the distance here is very low okay. and therefore there is a damage and the first our effort uh, to study this electron beam damage was in 1987-88 when one of my BTEC student did India's first radiation damage studies okay. so just to tell you because he is now with cadence nothing to do with evaporations. Kevin's US, he is a manager in some group. Okay. So this radiation damage was our great project we did from 87 to 93. We developed a new technology for radiation hardness but all said and done our first effort was on electron beam damages. Okay. We just want to see how much damage it gives and to our great surprise because our oxides are not that good compared in those days in 80s. Uh, our damage was sufficiently high, we used to see huge CV shifts, okay. So we first realized that yes charging is happening, okay, charging is happening. The next possible process in which we can uh, do evaporation but many other thing is to use of a plasma uh, in IC manufacturing. Uh, you look at the list I gave and there may be many more, I did not add everything. Uh, one of the features of plasma processing in IC is that you have what is called as plasma implantation. Sputtering essentially is based on plasma process. You can also deposit any material using CVD which is plasma enhanced CVD. You can always etch any material using plasma and there is no liquid there and therefore it is called dry etching. Of course in dry also there can be reactive and non-reactive etching but essentially plasma etching. And of course one can do analyzation 
of silicon itself using plasmas. So, you can grow ethene oxide using plasma anodization. The problem with plasma is similar, if it hits too much to a high energy then it may actually create a damage, but most plasma damages can be annealed in the plasma itself, okay. that is the fun part, okay. think of it by acids. Plasma itself can anneal the much of the damages. Okay. So, what is plasma? Plasma is the fourth state of matter which is very uh, I mean not so much taught from first standard, we keep saying three states of matter, solid, liquid, gases. But in fact, 99 percent of the universe is in this state that is called plasma state and we hardly talk about it, is not it? That is a interesting thing. What is plasma? Well, it consists of, it is, please take it always, plasma is charge neutral. This has to be understood, plasma is charge neutral. So, there will be electrons there will be ions and there will be neutrals, but net charge is 0, okay. Charge neutrality holds, okay. even if there is negative charge, positive charge and neutrals. Okay. This has to be understood. There are all, this, this is something which people do not realize, but this has to be understood that plasma is still neutral. Okay. However, it should be noted as I said plasma is neutral. If we want a material to change its state, if you or we, I forgot that or maybe, if one wants a material to change its state from solid to liquid or liquid to gas, actually energy required is very small, 10 milli electron volt, 10 milli, milli or 10 to the power minus 2 electron volt per particle. Okay. So, very small energy is required to liquefy solid to liquid and liquid to gas. But if you want to convert gas into its plasma, then you need roughly 1 to 30 electron volt per particle energy to actually create a plasma. So, plasma creation is much higher energy requirement compared to conversion from solid to liquid or liquid to gas. Is that point clear that why plasmas are not so very common because you will require higher energy per particle to create plasmas. Why are we so keen about plasma? I already listed that all processes which we now going to do in the next few days all are plasma based. Okay. So, today probably I, I wish to actually tell you what is a plasma, why it is so crucial okay, and what is the funda issue on that. Okay. Once you understand plasma then you can think uh, all designs of plasma systems are understood. Another issue which plasma provides you is called cold processes. The ambient temperature can be even as low as room temperature or at best less than 300 to 50, 200 degrees centigrade. So, it is a cold process, but we have said the temperature it gives is how much it can give to 3000 plus, okay, which means some way energy must be provided, okay. even if the ambient temperature is not large, the energy is higher which means K T is higher means T which is called electron temperature is 10 to the power 5, 10 to the power 4 degree centigrade. So, it is the electron temperature which we are rising and not the ambient temperature. This is the difference between normal processes which like diffusion what we do 800 degree furnace, 1200 degree furnace, there is nothing called 1200, is everything is below 300, okay. but internally there is a huge energy provided which rises the temperature, electron temperature to 10 to the power 4 or 10 to the power 5 and it can create therefore thousands of degrees of centigrade of temperatures. So, that is how the plasmas have become very popular. In all our diffusion process, implant process, we say anneal or any temperature time cycle, what does it do? What did it do? It is driven the impurities from its original implant position or diffusion that means profile changes. All your circuit analysis was based on a given profile. Okay. Now we all you must plan all of that a priori. Okay. Now that means any process which I do later should be such that it should not actually affect the process which earlier I had done, which means the temperature should be as low implant I did anneal 800, but then I will never go beyond 800 okay. and I will always be less than 
So, d t product at 300 degree is so small 10 to the power minus 16 minus 17 into t is the d t. So, you can say practically nothing changes at room these temperatures. So, therefore, these are called cold processes, okay. they do not change any profiles okay. or there is no annealing going on, there is only localized heating going on and you are doing whatever you otherwise would have wanted to do. Okay. So, that is why plasmas are very, very important that they give you cold systems, but very high temperature po increase possibilities. Is that okay, all of you? Kt, Kt is the energy, T is increasing. No, it will not be. Plasmas are, take from me once for all, plasmas are neutral. They start charging the whole, you will get a shock of your life, you know. Okay. So, please never think, no system is chargeable. It must provide some ground sometimes, or otherwise, also it will create a neutrality. Like semiconductors, you put a voltage here, your mass capacitor will not charge you, you know. Okay. Then, charge neutrality always holds. It is locally, we may say space charge, but still N and P are same. N plus ND. Uh, uh, P plus N D is N plus N A as in semiconductor charge neutrality holds, okay. this is important. All analysis is based only on this. For a transient case, there may be a possibility what you are thinking, but these cases are steady state, so we are not looking at it. In transient many things can happen, okay. there are reversible processes, there are non-reversible processes, so we will not discuss that. You want specially we have another hours for you, hour for you, transient process. K t, k is 1.23 10 to power minus 23, thus k e we go, is a divide karo minus 23, kitta temperature ja sakta hai. Energy to k e v mein de rahe na, then k e v ka to extractor laga diya na mein hai. The 30 e v ka energy mein bhi itna temperature hai, divide karo na k se, itna bhi electron temperature to bhoat jada hai, excessive hai. There are three zones of discharge in a normal plasma system and this is called the IV characteristics of plasma, you draw it and then I will discuss. This is very important, this is the fundamental of plasma. Okay. Where do you use plasma very often? Tube light. Of course, uh, this is a figure given probably in plumber as well or uh, maybe any, anything you on Google, this figure is most common, IV characteristics of a plasma is the most common figure available in with associated with plasma. I is in amps, V is in volts, the scale is 0 to 2000 and it is 10 to power minus 8 or minus 7 to plus 10 to power 9 or 10 to power 12 amps, huge scale. Okay. These are log scales, so shown on a log scale. Can be made high, that, all, that means all energy is not imparted. As I said that net energy I push it is not received by this, this is an energy conservation. So, not all energy will be delivered, so not all temperature will rise to 10 to power 4, is that clear? Energy is proportional to kT, is that correct? So, T will rise definitely the energy, but all energy is not transferred to the material, okay. This has to be understood, there is an exchange mass, both energy moment and momentum have to be conserved, so not all energy is transferred. So, there are three zones of discharge of a gas, okay I should have forgot, I did not write, this is a, plasma is only created from a gas, gas to plasma state, okay. So, we are now looking for dark discharge, glow discharge and arc discharge, okay. There are three zones in a plasma. So, if you look at the first part, okay, around 10 to power 1 microamp or so current, I do not see any plasma, okay. it is called dark, dark means no plasma. So, all dark zones are called plasma free zones. So, there may be ions, but there may not be electrons, okay. is that point clear? They may be ions there, but they are not enough electrons, only when electrons and ions come together, there is some light is seen, that is called glow. So, dark zones are those where there are no free electrons to interact, okay. So, this initial region is called dark region, 
Okay, so let me come back. I'll just show you. From say this onward to something like thousand amps, there is a region which is essentially called glow region, where plasma exists. Glow is most important for us. Glow. Okay, and uh, in glow also there are some peculiar things we have seen. In some part is called normal glow, the other is called abnormal glow. Okay. Why I showed you this specific abnormal glow? Because only this region is what is used in IC fabrication. Okay. So called this abnormal zone which does actually it should have followed something like this normally. Okay. It did not, some way it peaked up again and this is the zone where I is high and B is high is essentially what is of in a glow is of interest to us. That is the whole plasma processing rest on only this zone called abnormal glow. Okay. Ahead of this we find the world so much charges inside the tube or inside the area, the conductivity falls drastically. So the voltage becomes very, very low but the currents are extremely high and there you, you actually see arcs. So if you have air and you just apply 30 volts, bring it close, it will spark. Okay, spark is an arc discharge. Okay. Is that clear? But that is essentially people believe it is air. Actually air molecules do not break so easily. It is the moisture which actually picks up the arc. Okay. So you must remember it is the moisture which actually arcs up. So anyway, so these are again, we are, I repeat, my only interest is in this zone for all IC processing. Uh, in the glow region also, I am more interested in something not good, uh, worldwide abnormal. Okay. I do not want normal glows, I want abnormal glows. Okay. And only this region I may prefer to work on. So all my processing should be maintained somewhere to create abnormal glows. Now let us, uh, this I said it, so I now show, of course the upper figure right now you do not look at it, that I repeat again. If I apply voltage across the, in a tube or in a system across two ends, so I apply electric field, is that clear? There is a gas, I apply voltage across, okay. Uh, if this applied voltage is larger than the breakdown voltage. What is breakdown I defined? Breakdown is the voltage at which electron starts ionizing the gas ions. Okay. So if electrons and ions start forming, that is called breakdown. So onset, breakdown is not total. Onset of plasma is called breakdown voltage. So if your applied voltage is larger, so what will be the dark region? When your plasma has not been initiated, is that correct? Plasma has not been, so your voltages are, looks higher but not sufficient carriers are made available to you and therefore there is no plasma onset, okay. That region is called dark region, no onset of plasmas, okay. Electrons emitted at cathode, now you can see if I apply cathode, one where is the negative potential and the other is positive. So cathode is negative potential, so electrons are emitted from cathode because opposite polarity carriers will go towards anode. Somewhere this figure can be seen but there are many other things shown there, we will discuss them separately. This is my cathode, this is my anode, electrons will travel towards anode, is that correct? This figure you do not draw now because we will come back to draw that. Uh, I wrongfully draw here thinking that I, I may not give you this but then I decided to write. So that figure was anyway made, okay. Now uh, if you electrons emitted at cathode travel to anode and have fixed ionic collisions, okay. Now you can see here, I have a gas, some electrons stuck and ions are created, okay. Which side ions will try to move? Towards cathode, electrons will travel towards anode. This has to be understood, okay. Now, is that okay? So I last line I start now. Electrons emitted at cathode travel towards anode and had fixed ionic collisions. Then such created ions travel towards cathode because they are negatively positively charged. So 
so they travel towards cathode. Some of these ions when they travel, what is the force on them to travel? The electric field which I applied, is that correct? Electric field which I applied. So they pick up energy. Any charge carrier going through electric field will pick up energy. How much is that? Q into V. Okay. So charge into voltage is the energy and what is the force? Q into electric field is the force on them. Q is ele not electron charge, now ion charge. So, this energy is larger, is that correct? If these ions come and hit the cathode, okay, they are energy, you have a cathode. So, it will also ionize that region or something and it will create what we call as secondary electrons. One electrons was anyway coming because cathode is releasing electrons going towards anode, but this impinge also will create, because it will lose energy and when it lose energy it will create electrons, these are called secondary electrons. Uh, these ions produce secondary electrons from cathode surface, glow at this cathode is called cathode glow. Why now there is, there is ions, neutrals, electrons, everything possible, so near cathode very thin region you actually have a glow. So, if you see actually tube when it starts the cathode becomes slightly violet and then suddenly it, it loses that because then once sustained it does not need that. Okay. So, this is called cathode glow. Uh, but now think what is happening and this is self sustaining ions will come, electrons will come out and some steady state will reach, so you will have a constant cathode, thin cathode glow, you apply voltage, some ions will lose, some new ions, some new electrons will go, again ions, so average balance and please remember again plasma is neutral, this never go against that, okay. is that clear? This man I am impinging and harm him. Okay. If the current in the external circuit is now large, let us say because you have ions, that region has now lower conductivity, okay. uh, sorry, larger conductivity or you increase the voltage outside. Then you have a huge plasma electrons and ions and this region is called, uh, sorry this was wrongfully put here, this was, sorry this is Nin, Nin ka problem. This was something which was the we said to dark discharge glow discharge and this is the arc discharge. In arc discharge if you apply large currents or large voltages, the air or whatever gas will break down instantaneously and that is called arc discharge. Okay, forget about this, I am sorry, you come from here, okay. I do not know how this I wrote here but anyway. In glow discharge system as shown we have, now this is some, now you draw this, now you look back to this figure which is most important. This has a low pressure gas in a chamber, okay. it can be even tube, cathode ray tube, it can be anything okay. or in a system which is evaporated. evacuated. Okay. So, I have a cathode, I have an anode, I applied a voltage positive with reference to cathode, so electrons start coming and this as I say some ions strike cathode and may create a glow there which is thin glow, but it is called cathode glow. However, there is a space in which there is no collisions. What is this is because of I have written down below, but can be what? Can you think this region between the ionic region or the glow region, there is a gap between cathode glow or cathode to this region and which is called Crookes dark space, Crookes dark space. That is why S is always written by me, Crookes, his name is Crookes. This occurs because electrons, now this is, you think of it why I suddenly thought of this. What was the word written above? So, what does improve? Mean free path, yahan se yahan mean free path hai. So, no collisions, is that clear, clear to you? So, if the distance from cathode to the next glow, electrons do not interact with ions okay, because they are the mean free path. Okay. 
once they reach that mean free path, now they see gas and now they see ions and they may and by then they might have already acquired sufficient energy and plasma can be created. Is that word clear? So the, what is Crookes dark space? It is essentially the mean, fra, mean free path distance from cathode where no collisions are possible. This Crookes star space is a very important is also called there is a voltage drop across it. Why voltage drop? It has no ions there okay only electrons and so larger conduct uh, smaller conductivity. So there is a voltage drop there it is called cathode fall or potential across this is called cathode fall and that potential that region is also in our plasma system is called sheath S H E A T H I will come back to it later sheath this Crookes space is called sheath. So there is a sheath potential is that clear to you every sheath and what is in sheath there are no ions there is that clear electrons are now traversing in the mean free path ions are yet to reach this. So secondary electrons, main electrons both are not able to interact and they travel that small region shown larger just to show for it but it is a very close mean free path maybe a few centimeters and therefore you see a dark space there which is called Crookes star space okay. In this region there may be positive ions but there are no electrons which can interact okay. So if there is no electrons and ions then there is no glow is that word clear to you if there are no electrons and ions together plasma what, what did I define plasma equal number of electrons ions and possibly some neutrals is plasma. If electrons cannot interact they move out so in that region there is ions but they are not interacting with electrons. So this is the place where there is no glow. How much it can be? The length of the mean free path of the electrons. That region is called Crookes dark space or later we define that space as sheath okay sheath okay. So in a glow discharge system as we are next to cathode glow a region called Crookes dark space is in this region we have only okay fir se likho lik diya mene. In this region we have only positive ions and no electrons is that correct there are only positive ions but no electrons so no plasma okay. You just add this last ye jo beech ka para hai na wo pehle IV ke saath jod dijiye please remember this in between part arc discharge part should be part of IV this explanation wo galti se kaise idhar lik diya mene pata nahi maybe in some mood I wrote that but I just want to clarify. So we are now looking into this figure essentially this figure from here okay. So a cathode fall hai thoda sa uh, cathode ka glow hai wo minor rehta actually because most of the electrons are leaving that place. So the why it is very small because most of the electrons from cathode leave, second electrons also leave but some electrons are coming, some ions are reaching okay. So some glow is possible there. Okay, so is that uh, Crookes space is clear? So now let us talk further and this is very important region for us. This is the most important region for us. This is called sheath okay, S H E A T H. This Crookes dark space region is called sheath okay. Which is, which is, where is that? It is always close to cathode okay, it is very close to cathode. And again I repeatedly saying it once again I say it, its thickness is roughly the mean free distance of electrons traversing towards anode without collisions is that correct that is the typical dark space will be. However as it crosses the mean free path you are still electric field applied so what will happen to these electrons they will further accelerate energy lagi hui hai aap field laga rahe hai they will get force and they will pick, pick up the energy. As electrons gather energy from the field they are capable now to interact with plasma. Please remember when ionization can take place at least few EV per particle energy is given by that that is the plasma requirement was that correct. So till these electrons are able to get that much energy you cannot create plasma is that clear. 
So, it interacts with ions and creates plasma okay. and this is the glow region. Once it interacts ions and electrons available to you, this region is again which region? Glow region and among these two, among the glow region I said there are two possible glow regions. One is normal, the other is abnormal but that will wait. Okay. Okay. After ionizing the gas, electrons do not sufficiently have energy. Once you, why, why they lose energy? Because they have spent their energy in ionization, but they are still travelling towards anode. So, what will happen? The electrons which will come out of this glow will not be having enough energy. Is that they are lost energy? No? That is how they created ions. Okay. As they come out, since they have no energy, they cannot ionize. Is that clear? So, just a minute, I will just show you figure. As they come out of this plasma, beyond this the electrons do not have sufficient energy to ionize. Okay. They will pick up now, but still they are. So, they will travel for some distance before they acquire sufficient energy again and starts ionizing. Is that clear? This gap between a glow, this glow and this glow is given the name Faraday's dark space. Is that correct? The person who is our my bab. If Faraday would not have been there, probably electrical engineering would not have been there, you would have been saved. So, this Faraday's dark space, actually Faraday did this experiment. The, the name was given later. Faraday was also looking for discharge. The potential which allows sustenance of plasma uh, after analyzing the gas electron do not have sufficient energy to create further ionization. So, some part is left dark which is called Faraday's dark space. Beyond that electrons now they are closer to anode. So, they are very highly energetic to create plasma as they re reach anode and this region is called positive glow. The word is positive and the earlier we said negative is because of what? Glow is neutral. So, why it was given name negative positive? Closer to cathode, negative glow, closer to anode, positive glow, no other difference. Neutral. The glow closer to cathode was given a name negative glow, closer to anode is given positive glow. Now, there is something which I wanted to tell you about the uh, if you are written down, this is something, this is what has happened now overall. I have a cathode fall or cathode glow. Crookes dark space which I call sheath, then there is a negative glow, then there is a Faraday dark space and then there is a positive column towards anode. Okay. This is essentially a cross sectional view of the plasma. Okay. So, let us now do, is that okay all of you? This is what we have shown, the, drawn the figure, I am just trying to say how much, what is so far we talked about. I do not know where is this figure, but maybe I will say like that. So, as I said here earlier, the regions, region of interest to VLSI people is not really all dark spaces or non dark spaces or glow, only glow region near cathode is of interest to me. In fact, only glow region closer to cathode is of interest to me. Is that correct? As electrons create plasma near cathode after Crookes star space, initially the area of plasma because fewer electrons are coming and they interact with ions. So, the area of the plasma is smaller than the available cathode area. I repeat, of course, it is slightly broader than this area jo hai comparatively is smaller than the initially that area is smaller because electrons are ionized hota ja hai. So, initial area is smaller as you reach start growing getting a glow. Okay. Now, this is an issue electrons create uh, Smaller the potential which allows sustenance of plasma is a sheath potential and this glow is called normal glow. Kitna potential hai cathode ke maha par? Sheath ka sheath potential hai. Aur vahaan jo glow hai, wo normal glow bolte hai, initial jo glow hata hai, wo usko bolte hai normal glow. However, in case I increase the power, aapne IV characteristic dekha na? I increase the current, okay. So, if I increase the power now that is IV product beyond this where it started 
okay. Why, what will happen if I increase the uh, uh, electron current, I mean current means externally, the number of electrons which I am emitting will increase, so ionization will be stronger, so finally the total glow area will be same as that of cathode. So initial glow area se phir wo voltage jo hai, kyunki initially kya tha? Plasma bana. Ab jam ab bahate ja rahe hai, current bada to net resistivity bada gai. So voltage drop shuru ho gaya. But as it starts ionizing again heavily, it starts falling down once again. So initial glow se niche aya, phir till the time the new ionization starts, the resistance starts increasing of the system. So voltage starts rising, but at certain potential ionization is very heavy, it falls down again okay. and that region where it initially starts rising and falls down again is called abnormal glow region, okay. abnormal glow region. However, as power increases which in turns increases the current density at cathode, this results in increased secondary electron emission. In this small power region voltage is higher and current is also high. This results in a stronger plasma creation then and finally resistance goes down or the current goes down and this region is stronger plasma region is called abnormal region and please take it this is the only region of interest for me. So, uska kya meaning hai? higher current density pe mujhe operate karna padega, Edi I want abnormal glues. Okay. Of course, we further increase current kya hoga? Hard discharge shuru ho jayega. Currents are very high, but the voltage is because why it is ions are so many, so the voltage drop becomes very low and almost huge amount of current flows, 10 to power 9 amps the current jaasa, arc mein currents can be as high as 10 to power 9 amps. So please do not, that is why shock aata hai bahut baar hai, aap arc mein kahi aagai to upar ja sakte hai, okay. So arc ke saath kabhi khel nahi karna. Okay, so please remember this is the most crucial part to understand in plasma that after all that I only have a gas, I will apply voltage, I will analyze it and see to it I am in a normally region which is of my interest which is abnormal glow. Okay. Abhi thoda aur jo actual uh, system mein, we will do little more mischief, here is some more mischief for you. Ho gaya sir ye? Everyone? Of course as I say after the, this glow if you further increase current arc will start but that is not very important. Since the distance to anode, to reach anode, wo kitne jaake anode pe pohchte hain, usse sheath ke potential pe koi farak padta hai kya? Negative glow pe bhi koi farak nahi padta hai. Is that clear? So how far your anode has nothing to do with the cathode region. Is that clear? Ions hain, wo hit kiya, mean free path jitna hai, utna space hai beech mein, wahan plasma hai. Is that clear? So, abhi ye koi jaruri nahi hai ki wo anode ko bhoot dur rakhe jaye, ki wo Ferrari dark space dekhi jaye, koi humara usse koi samman nahi hai. So, let us do what further I say, since distance do to reach anode has no direct impact on glow near cathode, we can reduce this length of the tube or distance from cathode to anode, bringing anode closer to cathode. So, you bring your cathode anode closer to anode. So, sab se pehle to wo positive glow chala jaye. और छोटा करेंगे तो डार्क स्पेस फेराडे भी चले गए ओके okay. और पार्ट ऑफ दी नेगेटिव ग्लो में आंसर गो इफ यू ब्रिंग टू क्लोज ओके बट दैट्स फाइन द इवन पार्ट ऑफ नेगेटिव ग्लो रिड्यूसेस दिस विल हैव हैव अ पिक्चर ऑफ प्लाज्मा ऑफ दिस काइंड अभी देखा दिस इज व्हाट इट विल लुक लाइक इफ आई रिड्यूस द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन एनोड एंड कैथोड देन आई मे हैव अ प्लाज्मा टच टू एनोड Okay. And or this may be negative because negative glow, now it cannot be called negative also because it is also positive as well as negative. But negative glow bhi kam ho jata hai, part of this. And what is in between this plasma and the cathode? Sheath. 
and what is the importance of sheath? There is a potential drop there, is that correct? This is called sheath potential. What kind of voltage so far I have applied? DC, is that clear? I have applied DC voltage. Typically, how much voltage should be applied in the field of EV? So, 100 to 300 volts. At what pressure? Because that will be decided by pressure. Why it is decided by pressure? Large, no, not just mean free bath is one additional feature. Something else it gives. If your vapor, if the pressure is low, what does it mean? Number of gas molecules are less. Okay. So to create a current density, you will require larger than this. Is that clear to you? So you have to understand this that pressure also decides what are the voltages. So to create this kind of a, so I could have directly shown you sputtering from here. This is what they use. Okay. So normally the DC discharge normally occurs at pressures around 3 into 10 to the power minus 2 tor and typical allowed voltages of 100 to 300. If we reduce pressure, two things may happen. As you said, mean free path will increase. But larger the mean free path means what? Lesser collisions, so even less plasma. So do not think that reducing pressure is all good. Okay. It has advantage in the sense its purity, purity is maintained, but I do not want to. So, what I will do, I should do therefore, what I you said it first actually vacuum as much as possible and then backfill it with gas. So, if we reduce the pressure, we may have two issues mean free path increases, and unlikely event of collision, and hence creation of plasma may be inhibited. Okay. So, too small a pressure or too small a larger a vacuum is not advised. Though at times in other system evaporation we said reduce, reduce, do not reduce here. Okay. Because essentially it will not create sufficient secondary electrons, so no plasma. But that can be, you are short of electrons. Na? So if I provide you another source of electrons, all that you are looking for additional electrons to come. So then I said, okay, if that is your worry, I will apply you a filament heated electrode which I will call cathode and it will emit electrons. You are short of electrons can be probably taken care and then what can I do? I can further reduce the pressure is that. So if I want to do lower pressure plasmas, then I need additional electron source which is from the filaments. Okay. Here is that figure. Everything what I wrote here is available in mostly in the books as well. It is written in my own language. So here is what a typical system will look like. I may have this anode cathode here, additional anode cathode here. I may apply a minus potential here and I may have an anode here and I may have a filament which may give me electrons. Sir, heat kiya electrons mile, plasma tayar ho gaya. Upper a core plate laga diya mene. Maha kya create ho jayega? Cathode fall ho jayega upper. To maha bhi ek sheet tayar ho jayega. This is called plasma confinement. Kya kya mene? Plasma ko confine kar diya. And now vacuum can be even millitors. Okay. 10 to power minus 3, 2 into 10 to power minus 4, it can, 10, 8 into 10 to power minus 4. It can even go better vacuums. Uh, for better this, okay. but additionally you have to do few things. Okay. Now all along all this time I was talking to you that there is a DC voltage I am applying, is not it? DC voltage. So all the plasmas are what so far we discussed are called DC plasmas. We are done DC, DC we apply and whatever charge, discharge gas happened, we say it is a DC plasma. But in all our required system, we do not use DC plasmas. Actually, there is a DC diode sputtering, but that is rarely used, but possible. But normally, we will use RF sputtering or RF etching. Okay. So how does plasma rea is available to you in RF? The reason why it is yes or no is this. Okay. If you apply DC is fine, but if you apply very low frequency AC bias, Okay, instead of DC. So what does mean low frequency means? For a while cathode will become anode, anode will become cathode but very slowly because your frequency is very low. Okay. 
So, the plasma during the time when it was one end will only go from here to here, okay, from because it will create sheath here, then it will create sheath here, okay. but it will keep oscillating. But essentially, equivalent saying you have a DC discharge, okay. Though this keeps moving, but it has still an equivalent of DC discharge. However, if you increase the frequency, it cannot follow this movement, whole bunch of plasma cannot go so fast. Okay. So, there may not be plasma at all because if the voltage keeps changing, there is no time for ions to interact with electrons, they keep moving other side. So, there may not be any ionization at all if I apply an RF voltage, okay. but as I said we want to use RF discharges. Okay. Ions may not follow the fields, RF fields, but electrons can, no? so the advantage we take it. Electrons follow these fields, RF fields and pick up energies and slowly start ionizing the gas, okay. because once they will go here come back and hit again, again create ions, they move up this side, will move back by the time cycle asks you to come back. So, electrons will keep moving and may finally because of acquiring the, because the distance is small, there is sufficient energy they can acquire in every transition and it will keep ionizing the gas. This is called RF discharge, this is called RF discharge. Now it is very interesting few data should be known to you. Okay. RF discharge has something also to do with pressures. Why pressure? Do you believe at higher uh, lower pressure higher frequencies are sustainable or vice versa? I am asking you a question, if I reduce pressure should I have to go on lower frequency or higher frequency? Okay. Do not think too much. It is seen that RF discharge can occur at a pressure which is inversely proportional to sustaining frequencies, okay, 1 upon F. So, if you have a lower pressure, you must work at higher frequencies. Okay. This mode of plasma creation is called RF plasma or RF discharge. This technique of RF discharge is the technique used in all deposition and etching processes in IC fabrications. But they, they do not have to because electrons will ionize them. I do not want ions to move anyway, no? I want plasma to be sustained. But what would have happened if they would have moved then I will have to change the polarity to come back and I do not want them to move anyway this electrons will go and come back and they will keep giving energy because they will pick up energy from the field and they will hit the ions after a while they will ionize Ion, then you have a plasma. Okay. So, it is called RF plasma okay. that is in DC that would happen ions move but in RF it does not move. So, is that clear? So, what is the all this crux itna sab DC padhane ke baad kahenge nahi nahi actually DC use nahi karenge. Because to know how RF works, I said how DC works. Okay. Is that okay? You have to, I mean, that is what I kept saying. I am uh, not that these are not uh, known to many, but I only want to impinge on you these are relevant basics, okay. Whether you like or you do not like, but I believe you should know. Where is the uh, uh, people other than us are useful looking for plasmas? I didn't get you. Rocket propulsion. Yes, rocket propulsion is one. Third, another one. We are trying to generate electricity. Hmm? MHD project. Fail or I with it, but someday you need to start the plasma at 6000 degrees centigrade. Now, first sun temperature law or energy can't say energy lay up to, and then the efficiency is 30 percent. So, 6000 degree creation ke energy 30 percent of course return. Kare. So, MHD ka hydrodynamics barabar nahi hai, bas ye kar lo plasma hydrodynamics, you have a lot of game to play, you may become trillionaire if you succeed. Of course, the 
imagery system is right now have yeah in government of all five six big governments had spent ten trillion dollars and now succeeded. Okay, so they are firing now on the hydrogen bomb inside. So that that six thousand is reached. Okay, now the safety of that. If you fire a hydrogen bomb, yeah, some temperature will reach. Okay. But then everything will remain, or that also will go. Okay. So there are tricks. So something. I belong to DAE. I was in Tata Institute of Environmental Research, so I know much about atomic energies. <laughs> okay. Here is some RF system looks like. There is a, uh, in this case we do not call it anode or cathode, we say powered electrode where RF source is applied and the other is grounded electrode and it so happens that you have a sheath on both sides and uh, we define a potential Vp in the plasma and anything, any point in between we say floating surface potential Vf, we will discuss this later. This is an RF system. We have not shown you here also there will be a filament source to maintain electrons some once a while. Okay, so that I have not shown. I am right now only showing plasma system part. If I plot power versus distance, whatever is the sheath potential must be same as plasma potential. Jo drop hai, total drop to zero hi hai, RF hai. So jitna potential Vp hai, utna hai sheath per hai. The difference here is, please take it, the, the way these two figures are, these areas we call powered electrode area and also we have ground electrode area, AP and AG. The first case we looked into is AP equal to AG, so uniform sheath sizes with reference to plasma. So we say the sheath potential is same as plasma potential Vp. Okay. However, in many a times I may do this. What is that I have done here? The plasma powered area or the power anode or this a smaller area than the ground ones, shown as an example here or to say AP is smaller than EG and then if I plot the power, I will maybe next time I will show you more, there will be a negative VDC across at the close end of the power, there will be a voltage drop VDC, then the plasma potential and finally it goes to 0 at the ground. Okay. Please remember this DC potential here, average DC potential is minus we will come, we will use this and therefore I am not detailing it but just take it. Okay. So this is called asymmetric electrodes. Okay. So many of the RF systems have asymmetric electrodes. Okay. This is symmetric, this is asymmetric. We will come back to this part last, if you draw figure I will just show you the equivalent circuit for this and we will stop for the day. What is the plasma essentially equivalently you can see? See look at this figure or this figure. There is, but that is 1 upon omega, see depends on frequency, capacitive. There is a resistance associated in the sheath, okay. There is a resistance associated in the plasma, there is a resistance associated in lower sheath. So if I look at it, here is the figure. If the frequencies are smaller around 2 megahertz or lower, the equivalent circuit of a plasma is RS1, the top sheet plasma resistance and the lower sheet sheath resistance. Okay. And as someone wanted it, yes, if you are too large, a, actually R in parallel C hai, so whatever frequency is important will decide which one to stay. If the frequencies are larger than 2.5 megahertz but smaller than 65 megahertz, this behaves more like a capacitance, sheath acts like a capacitance in between. Plasma is why it is always resistance, ions, electrons, conducting have. Okay. So at a much higher frequency, it acts like a 
RC circuit and at lower frequency it acts like a resistive circuits okay. This is equivalent of a plasma. Before we quit I may just tell you all our frequency ranges for all RF systems one can always say 65 megahertz or I can have kilohertz or whatever frequencies. But there are limitations of using some frequencies okay. These are called firstly there is a wireless uh, standards which will not allow use to wireless bands okay. Uh, then there is a problem of the industrial band which will not allow certain frequencies to be used by other people. So there is some open band left so typically all RF analog RF, all RF or any frequency systems have only two frequencies we use 454.5 kilohertz. 454.5 kilohertz is one frequency given to us the other is 13.5 megahertz the other is 13.5 megahertz so these are the two frequencies allowed for any integrated circuit manufacturers is that clear so all system will either work at 454 kilohertz in which case this is the equivalent if it is 13.56 megahertz this is the equal 30 uh, up to 65 megahertz this circuit is valid beyond that socho kya hoga surface properties will take care so your plasma nahi rahega udar so is that okay so only two frequencies 454.5 and 13.5 megahertz these are the two bands given two frequency given to us for any any of the integrated circuit manufacturer has to use all over the world okay all over the world it's not us it's all over the world okay so you buy only these two frequency sources will be made available so this gives you some idea of plasma okay now next time we'll use this to create sputtering system deposition system etching system same same thing okay. just play games it will do one or the other, okay. See you then.